So today we're working also on the Segorite Land Trust. And the Segorite Land Trust came out of us taking over Segorite in 2011 in Vallejo. Segorite was a village site of my ancestor. It was a stronghold until 1810. The last of my ancestors were taken out of that village site and taken to the missions. And they held that land down. And on that land are two shell mounds. <coughs> creek that runs through there. And it's open for everybody to go there now. Anybody can go, right? It's called Glen Cove Park if you ever want to go there, right? Um, but in the midst of all of this stuff, we try to figure out what it was it that we could have done to save this place ourselves. And when we left uh, Glen Cove or Segorite in July of 2011, a good friend of mine, uh, Beth Rose Middleton, who's a professor at UC Davis, uh, before she left, uh, left uh, Berkeley, she wrote a book called Trust in the Land. And it's about indigenous land trusts. And there's only about a handful of land trusts that are indigenously ran, right, and all over the country. So now there's hundreds of other kinds of land trusts, right? But what we found out was that land trusts that most people have are about putting up fences and no trespassing signs and private property and not engaging people in land. All indigenous land trusts are about engaging people back in the land. So I went down to this meeting in Southern California and I met people, other indigenous people that were going. There's about a dozen people. There's this one guy, Dune, who, um, has, has, uh, was working from Alaska, and he, um, it was because of the Exxon Valdez spill, and his, their salmon village was totally taken out, and there was no way for them to make money anymore, and no way for them to feed themselves anymore. And so they were gonna get paid off this very small amount of money, and June said no. And he said, we can get, we can do something better. And so he began to get um, people in his own family giving him death threats and all kinds of other stuff. But he won the battle. He was able to save 144,000 acres of land for his tribe. He was able to enforce them to clean up so that they can, they can um, use the salmon again. He was able to do a bunch of stuff with his land trust. Then I was seeing these other people that were sitting around the table. And what I found out was that most of the land trusts, whether they're native run or they're non-native run, are run by men. Right? And I was like, whoa. So I asked June, I said, June, is this a boys club? And he said, yeah, kind of. And I said, okay. So I come back to the land with this idea and said, we could have actually saved Segorite ourselves if we would have had a land trust. We could have created that cultural easement ourselves, but we didn't know that that was the tool that we needed. I had no re idea why I was going to this meeting, except that Beth Rose invited me. But had I known that we could have created this land trust and saved Segorite, we would have done it before. And so now we have this tool that's different, that we can use, right, in order to create something good. And so we decided that we were gonna create a land trust because we're still fighting to protect our sacred sites. But not only that, but we learned these lessons about engaging people in the land and why it's important that everybody is engaged in the land. There's a story that I read, or part of this book, um, by Robin Kilmer, um, Braiding Sweetgrass. Anybody read that book? Right? There's a passage in there where she talks about teaching her students um, about uh, the land, right? And how there's a bunch of students that have never been engaged in the land before. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, but once you start digging in the land and start working the land, after about eight minutes, you start singing or humming, right? It doesn't matter where you're from. It's just a human thing to do. And so how we begin to do that again, to bring that joy back and that connection, because truly, no matter where you are, for, are from in the world, we had songs that went with our lands, and went with our plants, and went with our water. And so really it's about engaging again, right? But it's women that hold those songs mostly. And so we decided that it was going to be a women-led land trust, an indigenous women-led land trust on Ohlone land. So it's not just an Ohlone land trust, although it's on my traditional territory. Indigenous women have come to live on our land through forced relocation 
uh, programs of the U.S. government. <coughs> and for a generation now has never gone back to their reservation. And people need to be re-engaged. But there's other indigenous pe women from other pieces of land. And, there, and then we find out that there are people that are from all over the world that actually need to be re-engaged in the land.